boat thing because of the fact that, well, the camera doesn't make me look too good on this one. I've been having issues with Microsoft Surface, so I'm switching computers to make this work. Let's go ahead. This is an, a, a labor problem here, and this is actually one from a past semester that was not assigned in the current semester. We're going to talk about completing the table first, and then after we complete the table, we're going to talk about how to solve the rest of the problems. I'm going to go over here and talk about this. Remember, L stands for labor, measured in workers, we're keeping this simple, remember. And it's got all the various choices of the amount of workers that would be reasonably employed, from zero workers to 24 workers, higher than three worker increments. Remember, total product of labor is the same as quantity of output, and it shows how quantity of output is changing with respect to workers here. And so the very first calculation that we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and open up a slideshow so we can actually have this stuff uh, so for reference here, 2302, unit 3.0 those variables needs to be talked about. Once this thing boots up, let's talk about productivity of labor for a moment. Marginal physical product of labor, or MPP sub L, is the change in the total product or quantity of output divided by the change in the number of workers. And since we're doing this down a table, Total product of labor in row J minus total product of labor in row J minus 1 divided by number of workers in row J minus number of workers in row J minus 1. So let's get out of this slideshow here. I do not know what the deal is with this slideshow here. That was very strange. This should not be doing something like this here, but whatever. We will just roll with it. We will just go with it. I think this must have been saved in presenter mode, perhaps. 120 minus 0 divided by 3 minus 0, MPP sub L's production if it's measured in units, that's 40 units. 360 minus 120, that is equal to 96, divided by 6 minus 3, which is 3. 96 divided by 3 is equal to 32 units. And one more for good measure. 288 minus 216, okay, that is equal to... Uh, Okay, 96 minus 24, blah, 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 72, 72, then 9 minus 6 is 3, 72 divided by 3 is 24 units, etc. Run these down with the calculator. You may have to send a pause to copy this stuff down, but these are the MPP sub L's for part A. Now, total revenue is the old friend we have gotten to know and love. It's price of output times quantity of output, but since we're calling quantity of output TP sub L, we're going to use that formula. So, Notice in part A, it tells you price of output is $5.00 per unit. So everything in column 2 is multiplied by $5. And I already put the first item up here. $5 times 0 units is $0. Whoopee. $5 times 120 units, remember prices are per units, is equal to $600.00. And, and I'm not going to keep saying the $0.00 because you got to remember to write that. Uh, then five dollars and zero cents times two hundred sixteen units is equal to one thousand eighty dollars and zero cents. Every row in column two will be multiplied by five dollars and zero cents to get the values in column four for total revenue. And so, if we do all this, that gives you the total revenue column for part A. Now, marginal revenue product of labor. Let's talk about that formula here. That is the change in the total revenue divided by change in the number of workers, and they've got to divide a difference formula, but this takes too many steps. We have an easier formula to use over here. Price per unit of output times MPP sub L will also equal to MRP sub L, so that's what we're going to do instead. So column 3 has got the MPP sub L, and by the way, there's no MPP sub L at zero workers because there's been no change in output. That means there is no additional revenue earned from hiring an additional worker when there's no workers hired, so we have to start with the second row. 40 times $5 is $200. 32 times $5 is $160. 24 times $5 is $120, and zero cents in each case. So in other words, take every entry in column 3, multiply by the price in part A, $5 and zero cents, that gives you the values for the marginal revenue product of labor in part A. Now, let's talk about solving the rest of this problem here. We have to first of all determine if this firm hires labor or not, so we have to find the omega value. The omega value is the terminal wage rate. Let's go back over here to cost and talk about this for a moment. Okay, it says here, okay, that omega.
omega, the terminal wage rate is the wage rate which the firm will hire no labor and effectively shuts down because it is too expensive. Now, for a table like this one, for each section, find the highest dollar value of MRP sub L possible, add one penny, that's your omega value. So what's the highest value of MRP sub labor in this whole problem? $200 and zero cents, exactly. You add one penny, that's gonna be $200 and one cent. And so, alrighty, for part A, Notice here that omega is equal to $200 and one cent. Now let's talk about do we hire labor or not. Let's skip ahead over here. If W star is greater than or equal to omega, the firm does not hire labor and shuts down. If W star is strictly less than omega, the firm does hire labor and produces and sells output. So I'll put some more numbers in here. W star in part A is given as $40 and zero cents. Just figured out that omega was $200.01 by adding a penny to the highest value of MRP of labor. And so this firm hires labor because W star is equal to $40.00, and that is less than omega, strictly less than omega. Now, something else I need to mention before we get to the next part, and that is what is the marginal factor cost of labor equal to? Well, we are dealing with hiring a perfectly from a perfectly competitive labor market. So let's kind of scroll back over here on the costs. If the labor market is perfectly competitive, MFC of labor is equal to W star. So I'm going back over here. I'm putting a little reminder to y'all because we have to remember how to do this when this comes up. The marginal factor cost of labor is equal to W star, and that is equal to, pardon me, $40 and zero cents. Okay. Now, if we are hiring labor, we have to determine how many workers get hired. Well, let's go back and look at the rule in the slideshow. As long as W star is less than omega, and it is, a firm hires L star workers at wage rate W star corresponding to MRP of labor being equal to MFC of labor. So, we have this whole column of MRP of labor. Our MFC of labor is $40, and what do you know? That's here. Okay, MRP is equal to MFC of labor here. Let me just fill this thing in here, which is going to equal to $40.00, and that corresponds to 15 workers. It is important when you work these problems, you state what is L star equal to after you've determined if the firm hires labor, but you've got to use that rule about MRP being equal to MFC. Now, Total revenue is already calculated. Look up here. Here's total revenue for part A. Okay, we don't have to do a recalculation like we did before because that's already determined for us here. So total revenue, we just pull that sucker from the table. $1,800.00 is the total revenue here. But we have two different costs to calculate. And again here, okay, we have to calculate the labor cost. Okay, so let's do that next here. And let me change that symbol. We have dropped that symbol. It is LC now. Labor cost is equal to $40.00 per worker times 15 workers. $40 times 15 is $600.00. Okay. Next cost we have to calculate is the total cost. The total cost is equal to the fixed cost plus the labor cost. Just a little reminder to everybody. It states here fixed cost is $1,250.00 plus the $600 is $1,850.00. So now the question, does this firm make an economic profit or does it hit an economic loss in the short run? Well, total revenue is less than total cost. So if you said economic losses, you were correct. But I do one little adjustment here because we don't do losses in black. We do losses in red. Class losses and profits. Profit loss formula is always TR minus TC. And so let's put that in there as well. $1,800.00 for the total revenue in Part A, minus the total cost we calculated of $1,850. There's an economic loss of $50.00. Alrighty. So now, Part B. One of the things that is stated at the beginning of Part B is that the productivity of labor is increasing by 50%. Quantity of output is what we call productivity of labor. So columns two and three, which has all of our productivity, must be recalculated, and it's 50% bigger than it was before. 
So again, let's go back to our slideshow for a moment. I'm jumping around to the stuff that's relevant. These were covered you know, one after the other more directly previously here. But we used this percentage change type thing beforehand back in unit one when we were dealing with that total revenue issue. Will total revenue go up or go down based upon price changes or not? The thing is, if you have an increase in productivity, you need to take that percentage increase and convert it to a decimal. So on this problem, it's 50 divided by 100 or 0 0.5. You add that to the number one, you get a factor of 1.5. And every value for total product is multiplied by 1.5, and then it's 50% bigger. But it also works for marginal physical product of labor because of the distributive property of multiplication. Yay, math! Now, if we, if we had had a decrease in productivity, like suppose there had been like a 20% decrease in productivity, 20% is a decimal of 0 0.2. You'd have to find a factor of 1 minus the percentage change, since it's a decrease, so it would be 0 0.8. And so you'd have to multiply both the total product and the MPP sub L, marginal physical product of labor, by 0 0.8 to get values over 20% less. But for this problem, all these values here in these first two columns are multiplied by 1.5. And I put the first value up here. 1.5 times 0 units is still 0 units. 1.5 times 120 units is 180 units. 1.5 times 216 units is 324 units. 1.5 times 288 units is 432 units, etc. Take all the values in column 2, total product. Multiply by 1.5, that is based upon productivity of labor increasing 50%, and that gets you all the values that go into column 6. But remember, this also works for MPP sub L. No entry in the first row because there's no change in production at 0. 40 times 1.5 is 60 units. 32 times 1.5 is 48 units. 24 times 1.5 is 36 units, etc., etc., etc. All the values here in column 7 are column 3 multiplied by 1.5 because productivity of labor has increased by 50%. Now, we also have to recalculate total revenue, and that's still price of output of total product of labor, but you have to use column 6 now because part B has got a different production column than part A does. Now, also, make sure you read this problem carefully. Part B says price of output is $4 per unit. So every value in column 6 is multiplied by $4, and I already spotted you the first value, because $4 times 0 units is $0.00. And zero cents. We have to do the rest for the others. $4 times 180 units, $720. $4 times 160 units, I'm sorry, 324 units, I apologize, $1,296.00. $4 times 432 units, $1,728.00. Etc., etc., down the table. All these values in column six are multiplied by the price of output given below, which is $4.00 to get the new total revenue values. Now, again, just a reminder when we are calculating the total revenue, we also have a nice short formula for, MP, for, for MRP sub L, marginal revenue product labor, price of output times MPP sub L, but again, we have to use column 7. Part B has a different MPP sub L than part A does. And you use the price in part B as well. Class, a lot of your problems, a lot of the uh, difficulties you have can be mitigated by reading the problem all the way through carefully. So 40 times 6, if I pray 4 times 60, excuse me, you earn $40.00. 4 times 48, $192.00. 4 times 36, $144.00. All these values here in the last column, in column number 9, is the values in column 7 multiplied by the price in part B. Please notice we have a different MRP of labor value here for the largest value in part B, so that means part B has a different omega value. So when we start to work part B, we need to first of all determine if the firm hires labor or not. We have to do so using the correct omega value. But notice also the wage rate is different now. The wage rate is now $48.00 per period. So since the wage rate, $48.00 is less than omega. Remember, to get omega, you take the highest dollar value of MR piece of labor you, can, you possibly have, add one penny to make labor so expensive that they're better off not hiring labor, and boom, here we are. Okay. Now, another little reminder. 
marginal factor cost of labor is equal to W star. That is always true for a perfectly competitive hiring firm, but in part B, it states here that W star is $48 and zero cents. So make sure, make sure folks that you make that uh, comment there to remind yourself. Now, the general optimization rule for employing labor says we hire workers based upon MRP being equal to MFC, which in this case is $48. And whoa, what do you know? We have the exact same number of workers. This is just a coincidence, let me add. It is only a coincidence. I'm going to highlight this two ways here that uh, maybe I should have had the wage rate be $24 or $96 just so it would be different. But you know something? Sometimes these things happen in the real world, and we're just going to just go with it. Just follow the rules, and we're fine. Fifteen workers are hired once again. That's our L star. You must declare that. Total revenue. Make sure you pull it in Part B, because this is Part B's prices and output, not Part A. Total revenue in Part B is $2,160.00, and that's taken from the table. Now, you must also calculate labor cost. Labor cost is equal to number of workers. And let's change this here to say LC, because we are using the more current modality. Wage rate, $48 times 15 workers is equal to $720.00. And I'm going to do another adjustment here as well. I like to have this show the math work here. I want to show it in correct order. Okay, that's labor cost for you. Now, total cost is equal to fixed cost plus labor cost. Notice fixed cost is still $1,250 per period. I'm glad it remained fixed. Ha, ha, ha. And so fixed cost plus labor cost is $1,250.00 plus uh, $720.00. $1,970.00. Now, do we expect a profit or a loss? Well, take a look at that total cost. It is clearly less than the total revenue. So we are expecting this time around an economic profit. Profit loss formula is always equal to total revenue minus total cost, no matter what kind of cost it is. Okay. And so that is equal to $2,160.00 minus $1,970.00, which is equal to $190.00. And that problem is solved. This is a lot of formula work here, students. It's not that difficult. It's just that it takes a little bit of time to work through. And again, all the formulas you need to know are findable here in slideshow 10. So hopefully this guided problem will make things better for you. Alrighty. So again, I wish you all success here. And I thank you very much. And y'all have a nice day.